What is going on trash talkers? We are back with another episode for you. In today's video, we're gonna give you our top waiver wire ads for each position for fantasy football. All that and much more coming your way right now. All right, Nick, with the first full week of the NFL and fantasy football completely in the books, we take a look at the waiver wire for fantasy leagues all around the world and kind of take a look and see which players we can pick up to help our teams and obviously uh, in a way to get to the playoffs and hopefully win a Super Bowl. So taking a look at some of those players, why don't you start us off for quarterbacks who you think could help us with the waiver wire pickups? Yeah, before I get to that, I just want to let you all know, if you do not have to, do not use the waiver wire this week. This is a very interesting week that we just went through in the NFL that we're not going to see repeat itself. Everything that you saw, all these running backs performing poorly, that's not going to happen again. A lot of fluke things happened, and you're not going to see it happen again. So don't go off of what you saw in week one. Go by what you drafted and believe in the players that you drafted and just see how it plays out going after next week. Then you can try to make some roster moves through the waiver wire. But I would only use the waiver wire this week if you absolutely need to, if you lost guys like Raheem Mostert or Jerry Judy. But otherwise, I think that there are just not that many options available. And you're going to see some of the players on your current roster develop in next week's games. So moving on to the quarterbacks, the best available quarterbacks on the waiver wire. I'm going with Jameis Winston, who had an unbelievable game in week one. He didn't have the yardage that we're looking for, but he did have the touchdowns. And really, that's what matters most. He did not have any turnovers, which is a huge improvement over what we saw from him in Tampa Bay. I think that Jameis Winston is going to be even better moving forward because his weapons are no-name players. He's working with guys like Jawan Johnson and Tony Jones and and Marquez Callaway, these guys who are supposed to be the big names on the team didn't do much as far as getting a lot of targets, but they caught touchdowns, and that's what you want from your quarterback. I think that Jameis Winston offers a ton of value, and I think that he's going to be a very good waiver wire option going into week two. Yeah, if you're afraid of Jameis Winston and his potential for turnovers, then I would caution you to go with somebody like Derek Carr. We saw Derek Carr lead a comeback victory over the Baltimore Ravens on Monday Night Football. Derek Carr threw for over 400 yards with two touchdowns and an interception. Interception was kind of fluky. It bounced off of a receiver, then off of a corner, and then into the hands of a safety. But at the end of the day, Derek Carr showed that he can lead this offense. Derek Carr had 56 passing attempts in this offense, and he looked fantastic out there. When you take a look at what he was able to do fantasy-wise, he had about 29 points, but you take a look and say, well, that was the Baltimore Ravens defense that he went up against. What's going to happen when he goes up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Miami Dolphins, the Chargers, the Bears? Those are his next four games, so I think Derek Carr could be a really nice pickup for anybody looking to replace somebody like Matt Ryan. For running back options this week, I'm targeting Kenny Gainwell, the running back from the Philadelphia Eagles. This guy is a Swiss Army knife, and that's why I love him. He is a big weapon in the receiving game, the run game. He can throw the ball if you really need him to. Kenneth Gainwell was utilized as such in college, and that's exactly how Nick Sirianni wants to use him in Philadelphia. There are so many opportunities for him to get the ball. He's going to be out there for snaps when Miles Sanders is there, when Rager and Devonta Smith. So it doesn't matter what what the package is, what the scheme is on offense. He, there's going to be a way for him to be out there on the field. I think that's going to lead to a lot of potential targets for him, which is why I think he, there's a lot of upside in Kenny Gainwell this week. Absolutely. I, I like Kenneth Gainwell a lot and what he brings to the table, but 
you talked about Raheem Mostert early going down with his season ending injury and now taking a look at the backfield for the San Francisco 49ers. Most people would think that Trey Sermon is re ready to take over, but in fact, Eli Mitchell is going to really take this by the reins because Trey Sermon was a healthy scratch, was a, which is never a good sign. Eli Mitchell rushed 19 times for 104 yards and a touchdown. This guy was absolutely phenomenal and picked up right where Raheem Mostert left off. This guy looked exactly like him on the field, just without the injury concerns. I like Eli Mitchell. He's a big unknown right now, but anybody reeling from the Mostert injury, this is the guy that you're going to want to get. And if you're in a fab pickup league, I'm going to put a lot of stock in getting Eli Mitchell to replace Mostert. Next up for wide receiver options on the waiver wire, I'm starting off with wide receiver Christian Kirk. The Oklahoma connection for Kyler Murray and Christian Kirk is alive and well, bringing back exactly what they had at the end of last season. Christian Kirk going five for five with that massive touchdown. I think that that's going to continue moving forward throughout the season. AJ Green to me, he's not a real wide receiver too. Christian Kirk is the real second option to DeAndre Hopkins, and I believe that his target share is going to go up over time. I think that Kyler Murray has a lot of trust in him, and I think that they're just going to continue to improve together. I really like Christian Kirk. He's not only a waiver wire guy for this week, but I think he, he could be a long-term solution at the wide receiver position. Yeah, another guy that I'm really high on and somebody that most fantasy channels and most fantasy gurus are talking about, Brian Edwards. Brian Edwards is one of those wide receivers for the Raiders that is supposed to break out this season. And we saw just a little glimpse of what that looked like in their Monday night football game, specifically in overtime when we thought that he had the game winning touchdown just a couple inches short of the goal line doesn't matter. Brian Edwards is going to outwork every single defender. He is one of those guys that is not going to be held down for a single game. I really like what he brings to the table. In week one, he had four receptions on five targets for 81 yards. This guy almost had a touchdown added to that, but I, I think you can really rely on him, especially with Henry Ruggs being so inconsistent, Zay Jones only being a third or fourth option, and then the rushing attack here... Outside of Darren Waller, there's not much consistency with the Raiders. I think he's going to be that stable guy that they rely on in the passing game. And finally, we have the tight ends. The best option I can offer you is Jawan Johnson, the tight end for the New Orleans Saints. If we go back to Jameis Winston's time in Tampa Bay, he loved O.J. Howard. He loved Cameron Bray. And that's continuing over in New Orleans now. He loves the tight end position, especially in the red zone. Jawan Johnson had three catches on three targets in the red zone, two of which came in the end zone. Jawan Johnson, he may not get you a ton of yards, but he's going to have the red zone opportunities each and every week. There's a lot of upside here. He does have a low floor, but I believe that jo Jawan Johnson is among a lot of young, unproven talent, and that Jameis Winston is going to continue to work with his tight end position that he beloves. Absolutely, and I'm going to give you one that is a proven commodity, but isn't really rostered in most leagues. So Dallas Goddard, the tight end for the Philadelphia Eagles, is only rostered in 51.4% of fantasy football leagues. So you have a one in two shot in getting this guy on your roster. And what he was able to do was nothing short of spectacular. Four receptions on five targets for 42 yards and a touchdown. He has the rapport and the chemistry with Jalen Hurts to really get the job done. I think he is the tight end one moving forward. Zach Ertz is taking a back seat to this guy. And at the end of the day, Dallas Goddard is going to be one of the leaders in receptions and targets for the Philadelphia Eagles moving forward. Yeah, and if we go back to that Eagles game where... Dallas Goddard actually almost had a second touchdown in that game. He just came a little bit shy of the end zone. And if you put two touchdowns on Dallas Goddard, he pretty much becomes the tight end one for the week. And then everybody's trying to snag him up. If you can grab him in your waiver wire, I would absolutely do so. 100%. All right. Well, I want to hear from you guys. Let us know in the comments down below which players you plan on picking up and which players you want us to tell you whether you should or should not pick up for your waivers. We're here for you guys. So let us know in the comments down below. All right. Well, that's going to be all for now. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.